So in this video, I want to talk about ReZero, and I want to talk about the strengths and weaknesses as Subaru's character goes. And the reason why I want to talk about this is due to a particular tweet that has gone out. And it mostly started due to another tweet, which was Gigit asking for him saying, I'm looking for your hottest anime takes. And of course, there's definitely been some pretty weak ones, and there's been some pretty spicy ones. And one of those is by the notorious YouTube channel known as Smunk. Smug Al Anna. It's a it's it's a VTuber that has a fox avatar, and they have like a ice and a fire variant to it. I watch some of their content from time to time, but I wanted to talk about the tweets that they have made about Subaru, and I won't do my funny voice for this one, though maybe I might a little bit, but. It goes as following. ReZero is one of the worst animes ever that I sat through. When a main protagonist just has zero depth or personality with the constant resets even after 12 plus episodes, there's zero character development and it's the same whiny I want to give up mentality, it got boring ASF. Now, one of the things that I've talked about recently on the channel when it comes to romance animes, and I think this really does resonate with isekais as well, is this whole idea of growth doesn't exist because I don't like the growth. Or in another way to put it is, I don't like the direction of the growth so it doesn't exist. Because to say that Subaru has received no character like development or depth whatsoever or no personality is just factually incorrect. That's just a disingenuous comment. Because to say has zero depth or personality is just a bold-faced lie. It's just, Subaru may be insufferable to some, but just because he's insufferable doesn't mean he has zero depth or personality. He clearly has a personality, you just don't like the personality, so you null and void it. And this is an issue that I see with many people that go into these kinds of shows and they go, well, I don't like this, so I'm going to label it as something that it's not. And I think it's a disingenuous take, but I also think it's more of a knee-jerky defense mechanism because people can't really articulate themselves in a way that actually demonstrates of why they don't like Subaru's personality or the depth that is in him. Now, in the early stages of ReZero, and this is something that I've talked about in my old light novel reviews that I've long since deleted because they just were just old, terrible, and a long time lost, was that I talked about Subaru as a character from the early stages of the story of him being insufferable. He is. He's insufferable in the early stages of the story. Why? Because he has a main character syndrome issue where he kind of acts as if like he is the center of the universe and everything's about him and that he's this all holy knight and that he's going to solve all the problems somehow miraculously and he does some pretty rookie mistakes, especially with his return by death. He starts acting like he knows the ins and outs of a mansion that he's just started at. Even though, yeah, he's been there multiple times because of the death situation, they don't know that. So to them, they just think he's a spy because, oh, he knows where the clo where, like where the closet is, where all these different things are. He, he knows all these things that he shouldn't know. And so Subaru makes a lot of rookie mistakes because he kind of builds this whole idea of grandeur. But as time goes on, he gets brought down a peg or two. And is it brutal? Absolutely, he gets brought down a peg or two. Even in the first episode for season three, there is still some lingering feelings inside of him when he's reminded of his idiocracy back in the early stages and how he has changed and developed since then. Now, whether you like that growth or development, well, that's on you. But to say that it doesn't exist is just a bold-faced lie. Now, I get why they've done that because again it's, it's all about getting those rage baits it's all about oh yeah i'm gonna hit you with a hot take and that is the point it's a hot take it's designed to kind of throw people a headspin but the thing is is that when people point out their hypocrisy some of their like incorrect takes on it they get very defensive like people pointing out the tiktok mindset or the tiktok short attention span which is something that i've spoken about there has been written papers research done into how iq has like dropped over the last couple of years since the certain virus has gone out since tiktok and social media has become a lot more prevalent the average iq and attention span of individuals has gone down now their defense was they've read and watched the Lord of the Rings trilogy. But might I also point out the failing of your understanding is that just because you were 
or had a longer attention span back then doesn't mean that you still have a long attention span now. The point being made about TikTok is that TikTok has shortened people's attention span. Those that normally had a longer attention span have shortened it due to the constant pushing of shorts types content. And as a person that is a reactionary channel, not myself, they are where they do a lot of reacting to people's content. I take an educated guess that yeah, there's a high possibility that their attention span has been shortened and condensed. And I'm not saying the other thing where the IQ intelligence, but I'm just simply saying that their attention span has diminished because of this constant feeding of shorts content. doesn't mean that they don't watch some longer form content, but a lot of content nowadays has been designed to be very much kind of like a Mr. Beast style video, where it's always just like things thrown in your face rapidly to keep your attention span going, because any moment that there's a little bit of slowing in pace, instantly they lose attention and focus, and they go, ooh, it's boring now. And so, yeah, saying that you read or watched the Lord of the Rings trilogy doesn't mean that you still have a long attention span. And also to then turn around and make a tweet saying, well, I don't want to have to go through multiple seasons or, mul like, 20, 30, 40 episodes of growth for there to be any. Well, the start with Subaru does go through growth within at least the first core. It's just, again, it goes down to the simple factor of you don't like the growth, thus you claim it to not exist. And I think it does fall to that factor that, yeah, I think there's a short attention span issue. I think people watch these shows and they expect everything to happen very quickly now. People don't want to go through a multitude of episodes to see gradual development, not just for the main protagonist, but other characters as well. And when there is a large cast of characters, which ReZero does have a large cast of characters, it it's one of those where it's like, yeah, there's a lot of depth and character development that's going to go for a lot of people. Amelia's got to get her own growth. All the characters that are now in season three that are supporting Amelia and Subaru have got to have their own little moments, which they do within seasons one and two. Now, I definitely can understand why people find Subaru sufferable in the early stages of the story, or even still insufferable. He is a bit of a bubbly mess. He's very hyperactive. He's always sort of doing his little macho dances and trying to be all bubbly. But then at the same time, he can be very impulsive and very emotionally driven. But that's another funny thing is that he is very emotionally driven. When someone pokes at him in the right way, he can get really riled up to the point where he will say things that aren't appropriate or just make things worse, make the situation worse, which shows that he does have a personality. So again, to say that he does not have a personality is d being disingenuous. Now, the comment of the constant resets, well, I mean, that's the whole point of the story. He dies and he goes back to a save point. That is the gimmick of the show. If you don't like that gimmick, then you'd be better to say, I don't like the gimmick of the groundhog kind of system or the reset system. That would be fine. Again, they're entitled to their own opinion. I'm simply just criticizing how they're viewing it in a very narrow-minded mindset. And I think they're also just being disingenuous in their opinion. They're just using blanket statements without any thought behind it because, well, that's the whole point. They're just getting that whole idea of let me use the most basic terminologies and say he's just boring no personality because they can't articulate themselves in a way that represents what they feel i think overall i think the reality is is they just don't like subaru's personality and they don't like the direction of his growth and so they just go it doesn't exist which as i said is disingenuous now also the mind the comment of and it's the same whiny i want to give up mentality well i'm not an expert in this and i don't believe you are as well of dying i'm, I'm not an expert in it luckily and i'm glad many other people that are going to be watching this video aren't an expert in this area as well but if you watch the anime you can see that he doesn't exactly die in a graceful manner it's not like he goes to sleep and dies away peacefully he gets cut in half smashed slaughtered spiked harpoon head exploding poisoned i mean we could go on a long list of different ways that he's died 
I don't think that would exactly be the most pleasant thing to wake up out of, out of a reset, you know, you get spiked to death, that pain, the agonizing, the screaming, the anguish, and then boom, wakes up and goes, oh, now I've got to go through this again and hope that I don't die in the same way. The fear, the panic, the, the level of trauma that would put into you would just be, honestly, I'm surprised he's still able to cope but he still tries to push through and through and through, but it does show in the anime that he struggles at many points because he's going through a lot of pain and anguish. I mean, you could argue maybe that he should have maybe been in more anguish and more pain and more trauma for longer, but at the same time, you can't say that he didn't go through it because he did. And that's the thing I, I kind of see is that, yeah, He's gone through those things. Whether you want to say it's gone too fast or not, that's up to you as an individual. But I think a lot of these points being made by this individual are just disingenuous. I think they're just kind of throwing a very blanket statement and just kind of going river. And then as soon as any pushback got thrown at them, they got very defensive. Very, very defensive. Also, this whole idea of Subaru is meant supposed to be hated, I don't agree with that. I don't hate Subaru as a character, I just find him insufferable at the early stages of the story because, again, the main character syndrome issue, which is what he develops out of over time. It's not instantaneous, but it does happen over a period of time. Now, of course, we are entering into the third season, which we've had two seasons, two cores each, so you say and I, can't, I don't remember exactly what the number count for each episode uh, season is, so it's just, let's just go 24 plus 24, so it's like 48. 48 episodes of overall growth. I think, yeah, Subaru has done a fair bit of growth in that period of time. There are other characters, as mentioned before, that have grown alongside of him. But you're not going to have instantaneous growth. I mean, you see a lot of live-action TV shows that have, like, six seasons, eight seasons, and maybe they start to show some general growth, and I mean, it's not, not the best example, but Western media seems to get a lot of easygoing sort of push of, oh, you can take as long as you want for the character development, and a lot of the excuses are, is there are other characters there, Subaru and ReZero have a cast of characters that are working alongside, and it's a gradual story being built up. You've also got to realize that some of the other side characters will develop slower because of some of that issue of Subaru going back to certain time save points. So yeah, they might develop a little bit slower compared to him, but he does go through, in my opinion, some quite significant changes. I honestly would feel like it's a bit of a yo-yo as far as his development goes because he's going through those moments where, yeah, he can be insufferable, annoying. He's going through massive trauma. He's trying to bounce out of it, then more trauma, and just constant back and forth, back and forth. Maybe you could say it's too repetitive. Maybe you could say that, but to say that he has no personality, I think is disingenuous, and I think it is... I don't like using the TikTok word anymore, because I feel like some people get very worked up over it, and I get why, because it's basically saying that you're an idiot by saying that, and I, I don't think it's a fair representation, because yeah, I am, I am a guilty of it as well, where I've consumed so much shorts content that I've gotten to the point where when I watch some long form content, I get a little bit short impatient. I'm like, oh, can we get to the point? And I think that is an issue when you start consuming a lot of shorts content, you start to expect that same kind of quick paceness in the longer form content that you consume that is trying to build up a narrative or build up the stakes or build up something in general, and you just kind of want it to get to the point. But I think this has become a very big issue. It's been well documented that the general IQ has gone down, the attention span of individuals has gone down, and I think content creators are part of that issue where, yeah, their consumption of constant shorts content and constant pushing reactionary content has created this mindset that we kind of expect things to just happen very quickly, or it to be so in our face that we would have to be blind to not notice it. Which is kind of funny because some of the remarks to the individual are pointing out that they've basically been sleeping through the anime. Which definitely is some good quality uh, memes there when it comes to it. So I'd love to ask a question off to you. What are your thoughts on Subaru as a character? From the growth itself, the highs, the lows, the yo-yo effect. Do you find him insufferable in the early stages? Do you hate him? Like what is your overall thoughts of the early stages of the story going through and do you feel that this comment of zero depth or personality 
is warranted. Because in my opinion, I don't think it is. And again, stay civil, stay chill. If you like this video, hit the like, subscribe, and I'll see you beautiful nerds in the next video.